Hi everyone and welcome back to another TFT masterclass. Today we are going to be doing a patch rundown on the new upcoming patch 14.12 which should be coming out this Wednesday, June 12th. So let's get straight into it. Today we have a couple topics we're going to be going over. We're going to go over the system changes which is mainly about the level 7 shop odds, go into the buffs and nerfs of traits and units, buffs and nerfs of items and augments, and then finish off with a recap and a Q&A. Today, it's basically going to be just giving a guide on what the changes are going to be from the new patch. And hopefully this will give you some insight and some tips to prep you for the new patch and hopefully help you talk for your games starting Wednesday. All right, so starting off with the system changes, we only have one system change and that is going to be to the shop odds. So essentially the shop odds are going to be changed only on level seven, which allow you to reroll three costs a lot easier going from 36 to 40% and you'll be seeing less of one and two cost units once you're at level seven. So that is what the change is in general. This is the first of the Yone buffs that we're gonna be talking about. Uh, since we included Yone on the initial screen, there is going to be a few, actually more than a few Yone, bu Yone buffs coming this upcoming patch. So if you are a Yone fan, this is great news for you. And if you don't like playing against Yone, then uh, this, this might be a bit tough. So that's the only system change uh, just for level seven. Now we move on to trait changes. So we have a couple here. Many of the meta traits were nerfed. So for example, Duelist and Sniper. We have a couple other changes as well. Uh, so first off, we'll just even start off with Duelist. So four and six Duelist has been nerfed now. The attack speed per stack going from 10 to nine and 14 to 13. Although this is not, this does not seem too big. Remember this is attack speed per stack. So this will actually add up quite, uh, quite, Quite largely, and remember, the more attack, the more uh, base attack speed you have, the easier it is to get stacks. So the entire duelist like system is just going to be a bit slower now. The next one is going over to five exalted. So the five exalted XP used to be just one. Now it'll grant you two. So this means two things: uh, getting five exalted in early in the game is going to be quite useful for you now because that is essentially just two bonus gold every round which is really good especially if you're just like loose streaking and trying to um, gain some money that way so best early this can be done when it's like the five one cost exalted this is very easy to fit in and then also you just have to remember that even though one to two gold or one to two xp does not seem too much this is a uh 100 increase so the value is being doubled so five exalted should be quite good now especially if we could fit that in early all right, onto the second Yone buff, or we have a four Reaper bleed duration buff. And you might think, oh, going from three to two is actually a nerf. But if you think about it, uh, the damage that goes through when you have four Reaper in, having having that damage go through in a, uh, I guess, lower amount of time or a quicker amount of time is actually a buff. It, this results in more of a burst rather than a drawn out damage over time. So this is good. This is good. Getting that amount of true damage in. Uh, or bonus damage in through two seconds rather than three seconds is going to be quite good. So this is technically the second Yone buff to the four Reaper Yone line. And then uh, Sniper, four and six Sniper, nerfed a little bit, not too crazy, just a little bit. And then the very last one is a buff to two trick shots where it goes from 40 to 45. Normally right now in the Kaisa build, you are going four trick shots, which recently got rebuffed to 60. However, now if you're playing like the Dragon Lord version and you only have your Kaisa plus your Zaya, two trick shots, then that will be buffed a little bit. And also this helps out into your early to mid game when you are only playing two trick shots. So those are the major changes towards the traits. Moving on to the one and two cost units, only one unit, one cost, one one cost unit change is going to be a buff to Sivir 2 and Sivir 3, just a little bit longer of the ability duration. Now moving on to the two cost, there's a lot of two cost buffs, but they're all pretty slight and they're all related to damage. So Aatrox, Lex, and Senna have a slight damage buff towards them as at all stages of their hit. One thing to note is Aatrox has been buffed now for a couple patches in a row. If you remember previously, Aatrox kind of got a rework just from being like a frontline trait bot into more of a frontline magic fighter with less mana being able to cast more often and deal more damage. So now this is uh, going to be his, I think his third buff in a row uh, because previously he even got another buff to his spell damage. So Aatrox is going to be quite a good unit now. And because of the buff also to Senna, perhaps this will bring the Senna Ghostly Rural back into meta instead of only playing the Zyra Zoe Ghostly version. 
Moving on with our other two cost units, we have slight damage buffs to Janna and Riven. So what does this mean? We have a ton of two cost units that now do a lot more, not a lot more damage, but do more damage at every star level. So this means that playing around like early, even to mid game boards, they're just going to be stronger on average because uh, these two costs are just like stronger, stronger units. So this means that going into more like mid to late game if you have a lot of two costs on your units or a lot of two costs on your board you will on average have a stronger board relative to this patch or a previous patch where two costs are just not as strong so that's one thing to note that the mid game average board strength will be stronger and also a couple of reroll lines will be stronger now especially if you see like some of the three star changes are quite substantial at least compared to like the one or two star so for example like jana is a, is a good example so a couple of reroll re lines will be stronger in certain spots or if you have a certain augment that helps that line. That is the one and two cost units. Moving on to three cost units, only two here, Soraka and Yone. So Soraka's three, Soraka three, her spell damage got buffed on the primary and secondary. To be honest, you're not really playing Soraka three unless you have a specific portal like York portal or uh, even like a reroll augment. Normally on your board, you're just playing Soraka 2 and only on certain boards. But if you ever get Soraka 3, it does more damage. This is going to be your third Yone buff directly to Yone now. I remember, so I'll just talk about this one first. So base attack speed going up from 0.85 to 0.9, which is pretty good for Yone. And also in the previous patch, Yone 3 got buffed as well, I believe to his shield and I think his damage which is his two main, two main points of his kit. So now, if you are able to hit Yone 3, uh, it should be actually quite strong. So the three cost units, moving on to four cost units. Annie and Galio have a mana buff, so 20 off their max mana. We have our fourth Yone buff to the Yone Reaper line with Kane gaining five extra base AD and then a bit of a Nautilus HP nerf. So what does this mean? It means compositions that use Annie. If you're either just playing Fortune in general or playing the Dryad Invoker line, or any board that you just have Annie on, she'll be able to cast more often, heal herself, and just do a bit more damage. Galio, same thing, cast more often. Base AD is really important. So this is just because it scales so hard within their kit, within like even one to two star, like the change. So base AD is really good. This means Kane's going to be doing a lot more damage. And this is going to be the fourth and I think final buff to the Yone 4 Reaper line. And I'll talk about this at the very end as well. But I do believe that the Yone comp should be coming back into meta or at least playable in certain spots. The Nautilus nerf here, you shouldn't worry too much. Most of the time Nautilus just casts once anyway and then dies. Uh, this is just a small nerf to the Sage Lilia comp or the uh, Ash Warden comp where you just have a little bit less frontline. And then last but not least, we have two five cost changes to Huey and Lissandra. Huey has a little bit of extra damage at her one at his one and two star uh, state. So this affects mainly two comps. Fast nine playing the AP version instead of like Irelia Dragonlord is going to be a little bit stronger now. There were no nerfs to the four Dragonlord Irelia portion. So I think that uh, that composition is going to be stronger as a fast nine level level nine comp. However, if you only have AP items or that's how your game came to be, then at least now your AP level nine will be a bit stronger. And also vertical mythic, these lines will be able to cap higher with extra Huey damage. And then Lissandra, this loot chance, not too big of a deal. Honestly, if you have Lissandra early on level seven, hopefully this will farm you like one or two components, but most of the time you're dropping Lissandra on your board anyway, as you get to level eight, uh, unless you're playing vertical arcanist. So those were all the changes to the units. Moving on to items now, we have a couple item changes. I'll just go over them one by one. So Lich Bane, the damage is going up. You might think that this is a little bit odd because it was so broken on Kindred, but we'll be addressing that at the very end as well. Basically Kindred uh, kind of bugged with this item. Well, Kindred was just bugged in general, which allowed her to really make use of Baboom and Lich Bane. So that bug is away, which is now why Lich Bane is getting a little bit more damage. Suspicious trench coat. The HP is going down. I remember this is per uh, copy after the initial unit splits. So this is actually a good amount of less HP. This is actually quite, uh, I would say, a, a, a kind of a big hit to this item. But it was the, I think, the best performing artifact. So it needed to be done. A little bit of visual support to Aegis 
Now the big one here, so spite has been adjusted. The AD, well, if you don't know what spite does, essentially once the holder dies, there's kind of an explosion and it triggers a couple of things. First off, the enemies in the local area have their attack damage and ability power reduced. So now that reduction is going to be 40 to 25%. And your allies have their AD and AP increased going from 50 to 40%. So that is the kind of the nerf portion. And then the duration is increased by five seconds. There's one extra thing, effects now stack. So if you have two spites on a unit, or you just have like them next to each other, uh, then the effects will stack and these will be doubled. I still don't think this item is that great, but I, hey, who knows, if you have two spites now, then you could just really rampage through one side of the board. You have 15 seconds to do so. And then the very last two changes are the burn slash wound items, the radiant versions. They were recently bugged. Uh, which allowed them to perform better than they initially were supposed to be, but their bugs got fixed regarding how much they actually burned or wounded. So now that the bug got fixed, they became a lot weaker, and hence why they're now getting buffed again. So Crest Ascenders and Mormorella Nomcon get a little bit of buff to their bonus damage duration and their attack speed. Okay, so one of the last ones here, augment changes. There's a good amount of changes. So risky moves, you take your damage early, 20 HP, and then later you get three extra gold. So 30 to 33, not bad. Good from a really strong start. Boiling, boiling point, I actually think might be uh, a bit more takeable now. Basically, now you're able to guarantee play two porcelain, and that's the whole point of playing boiling point. So now that it gives you a full Mumu, it's actually going to be quite good. Build different, still struggling a little bit after the four cost changes, but now a little bit more attack speed. I'd say this is one of the big ones. Combat Caster is one of the best combat augments currently on 42.11. It's just so much effective HP for your entire board. The shield going down from six to four seconds mean that you might not be getting that full value of the shield. Uh, in the front line, you will be because you will be taking damage within four seconds and after you cast most of time but in the back line uh, you might miss some intervals so i would say it's still good but definitely not going to be the best combat augments anymore crown guarded the increased effects going from 75 to 100 percent remember this is for the ap and shield so it's actually quite decent it'll grant your uh it'll grant your units that have a crown guard a lot more ap and just a more more of a shield now remember don't stack your crown guards and distribute them distribute them across your units Long shot, a little bit less less attack speed was a really good augment for snipers. Uh, trade sector giving two extra gold, it's nice, but the augment is still not that great. So I I don't think trade sector is going to be that good. Wrath of the Moon, the damage is getting lowered to compensate for the Yone buffs. <laughs> this is this makes sense. If both were, or if Wrath of the Moon was not touched, then once you get Wrath of the Moon, or if you get it, then you're automatically playing Yone, and you just have basically a free top four. I would imagine. And then the last two, Prismatic, damage increased for Baboom. Uh, remember now I said that Kindred, the she no longer bugs with these augments, so that's why the value of the augments are going to be getting increased or buffed. Uh, so this is going to be very good for Sidra now, and it will still work on Kindred, only on her second cast though, not every cast. And then Shopping Street, going from 3 to 4 gold, will not matter. This augment is still not good after the changes. Alright, um, this is going to be our bug fix slide. Mainly, I just want to talk about Kindred, but a couple other ones. So, Fortune Tooltip, yeah, it specifies a little bit more often. Or it specifies more that you gain luck only when losing player combats. So it's just like kind of a text thing. The first one is, there was a bug with Fishbones and Rapid Fire Cannon, where if you like put them on the unit and I think bench them, um, basically there was a way to like increase the range of your units, even though they weren't holding the item. Not 100% sure, I, I didn't use the item to bug, but... Basically, don't worry about that anymore. The bug is fixed. Behemoth is kind of a big one. This applied in the Syndra Faded comp a lot, and then just in Vertical Behemoth. Uh, but more in the Syndra comp, basically, if there was a unit between the two Behemoths or the Behemoths were more than one hex away, and basically not adjacent to each other, the Behemoth on death buff would not apply. So that has been a uh, bug fix now. So now you don't always have to put your Behemoths adjacent. And then the very last one, Kindred used to apply effects twice on her cast, which is why she was so good with Lich Bane and Baboom. That's no longer the case, which is why Lich Bane and Baboom got buffed. Alright, so summing everything up, we have a couple lines here. Yone, the four Reaper line, should be back in meta, or at least should be pretty good in certain scenarios. We have four buffs to them, so the shop odds to level 7, an actual direct Yone buff, a four Reaper buff, and then also a Kane buff. There are a lot of two cost buffs, so now on average, mid game board should be a lot stronger, and you have some extra reroll lines that are playable. And then last but not least, some meta comps such as Duelists and Snipers, the four and six 
uh, threshold got nerfed and other comps should do better now. So that's everything. Uh, hopefully this provides us with some new compositions that we can play and kind of freshen up the meta a little bit. I guess I'll do a quick recap, but honestly nothing uh, too crazy. So I would say like one of the biggest ones, level 7 shop odds. This will bring reroll back hopefully. So now it's not just a level 8 a, a level eight uh, race or just like rolling on level 7. Now it will be a little bit better. Uh, a couple buffs and nerfs to units, mainly 2 cost units. Uh, a couple buffs to the 4 cost units and then also Yoni getting that buff as well. Items and arguments suggest a little bit of balancing, nothing too much, and that's it. So that has been everything for today. Thank you all so much for watching, and we're going to head into Q&A now.